Oh, things are literally heating up in Singapore. The country clocked its warmest decade on record despite increasing rainfall. And that's based on the latest annual climate assessment by Meteorological Service Singapore. Now, the data shows that temperatures are steadily rising, an average of 0.24 degrees Celsius every 10 years. And that's based on daily thermal readings from the climate station at Changi Airport. Now, Singapore's hottest decade on record saw average temperatures soaring to 28.01 degrees. And last year ranked as the 10th warmest year since 1929. That's in nearly a century. Also, May was the hottest month when temperatures rose above 34 degrees for more than three weeks and exceeded 35 degrees for nine days. April 1st was the hottest day of 2022, with Admiralty logging 36.8 degrees. And then there is the urban heat island effect. The meteorological service says a combination of this and global warming are contributing to Singapore's continuous rising temperatures. Now, the extent of the effect varies across the island, mostly affecting areas with high-rise commercial buildings and industrial areas with increased energy consumption. Well, last year also saw Singapore's wettest October ever in the last four decades, with the average rainfall recorded at 412 millimetres. March 7th was the second wettest day of the month in the last decade, with the highest daily rainfall of over 130 millimetres. Now, this caused flash floods across the island, particularly in the southern and western parts. And uh, for more, we have with us Dr. Thea Turkington. She's Senior Research Scientist at the Centre for Climate Research Singapore. Dr. Thea, uh, we just heard Otelli uh, regaling us with uh, the facts that spell out how the last decade has been the hottest on record for Singapore. Uh, anecdotally, that's certainly the case, and we have the figures to show that. Do you see enough consistent, significant correlation of factors to suggest this is a pattern we can expect to see in the future? Well, yes, looking at 10 years, indeed, it was the warmest decade on record. And it is important to look at longer periods of time to see, as you say, is this indicative of things to come? And indeed, in our latest climate assessment report, we did see that our temperature has been rising uh, fairly constantly since at least the 1980s and even earlier as well. There is year-to-year -year variability, but on the whole, we are getting warmer. Mm. And uh, Dr. Thea, I just want to touch on the urban heat island effect. We roughly talked about it when I was uh, at the video wall. Perhaps you can just give us insight into how exactly is it measured? I mean, it, it's just sort of basically heat from, say, buildings and, and roads trapping and releasing the heat at night. And does that also explain why sometimes it feels like some parts of Singapore, you know, feels hotter than other parts uh, at night? Yeah, you, you did capture that fairly well. So the urban heat island effect is really that difference in temperature between our towns and cities and our more rural areas as well and more greener areas as well. In this report, we actually focused particularly on could we see an effect on our long-term records? So we used two stations that have long-term records. One was in Tanga, so that's in the situated close to the river, you know, in a more greener area compared to one at Changi Airport as well, which is close to the run uh, runway in a more rural area as well. So we were looking at the difference, could we see a difference over time in these long records? And for the urban heat island effect, we tend to see the biggest impact at night, especially calm nights where it's a bit clearer that our uh, urban areas tend to be quite a few degrees warmer than our rural areas. So in this report, we looked at these two locations, looking all the way back to 1973, and we did see that our slightly more urban uh, station at Changi did warm faster than at Tanga. Now, if you wanted to really pin down the urban heat island effect, you would you have to choose your stations, perhaps maybe choose a bit or better representation of an urban station and a rural station uh, to capture, yeah, really to get that effect. Uh, but in this report, we really wanted to focus on our long-term records. So we were constrained to those stations that we did have nice long-term records for. I think Otelli was uh, explained to us earlier as well, uh, what we are feeling in Singapore is a combination of not just this effect, but also global warming. So when we talk about mitigation uh, in terms of addressing climate change, there's not a lot we can do to change what's happening globally. We are very, 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 very small part of what's happening there. So how can we adapt here within Singapore and maybe in terms of the way we construct things, our urban environment, in that we mitigate the effect of climate change? So do not contribute to an existing problem. 
Uh, that's a very good question <laughs> that you asked. Uh, in our work, we focus really on understanding the weather and climate, uh, not necessarily so much on that next step. This is what we do is we work hard to develop a better understanding of what caused our past changes, as well as try to develop projections for the future as well. Actually, we're working very hard on Singapore's third national climate change study, which is scheduled to be released late 2023. So when we have this, well, in this part, we also have projections for temperature, rainfall, and other variables as well, up to 2100. And then we can give this data to other agencies and other organizations to really try to answer your question is that. Because we can see, we've seen the temperature has been rising. It's going to continue. So yeah, we have to do something about it as well. But we talked about temperature rising, you know, feels like it's getting warmer in Singapore. But at the same time, you know, you go on social media, you see like hashtag winter weather, you see people bring out their jackets, you know, and it feels like it's raining, their brawlies are out. Um, is this the new normal? I mean, the fact that we are also getting um, more rain or, or, you know, or is that something that you would perhaps like to clear up that that's not the case? Oh, sure. Also a good question. Our rainfall is quite variable, but you're right. If you look at a report last year, 2022, we had above average rainfall. 2021, we also had above average rainfall. But if you go even longer back in our records, we do have drier years and wetter years are, as well. So our rainfall is very variable, but that means that we have to be able to prepare for both very wet and very dry. Uh, but also, you also talked about the winter jackets as mm. well. So Singapore does actually have seasons. So we do have sort of our northeast monsoon season and our southwest monsoon season. And we do tend to have slightly cooler temperatures during our December, January months. So it just feels a little bit cooler. I wouldn't say cold, but it feels a little bit cooler, yes. You could clear this up for someone like me because I suppose I would be misled by, by phrases such as global warming. In fact, climate, the climate change crisis is, I think, as, as Otelli suggested in her question, much larger than that's things getting warmer. Uh, things get, I mean, not, say not in Singapore, but elsewhere around the world, we saw extreme weather events. So it's not necessarily getting hotter. It could also be getting much colder or the periods of time in which we get extreme heat and extreme cold, those are varying as well. So for Singapore, what is the climate change crisis for us? That's also a very good question. I mean, I think it depends on who you are, what your activities are. Uh, but what we can say is exactly what you said. We see the temperatures rising, but also in the report, we talked about the number of very warm days is also increasing. Uh, we saw a high number of days in May, you mentioned, about above 34. And we've seen in some stations in our long-term records, increasing about up more than 10 days per decade for days above 34 degrees. But as well, it's also rainfall. And also, not included in this report, but in previous uh, assessment reports, we've also talked about sea level rise as well as being an important factor for Singapore and, and other places around the globe as well. Mm. So, I mean, I'm just wondering, just, just looking ahead, right, uh, what, what is the worst case scenario for uh, Singapore, you know, if nothing is being done? Uh, that is also a, a, a tricky question. Um, but we know that the temperature will be getting warmer. We know the sea levels will rise. Uh, exactly how much, it, it's difficult to say because it, it's how little we do. I, I, I think they've put it, I think, at uh, I think 40 degrees, right? Possibly by 2045. Is that still, this was a report, I think, two years back. Is that, is that do you think that's still going to... So yeah. I would stay tuned to the end of this year to hear more. Um, but I would also add on a comment to that. Uh, it's not just the temperature, but also the humidity as well. So sometimes it can feel hotter when not only we have these hot temperatures, but also humidity as well. But yes, we'll, we'll have an update for you later this year. We well, look forward <laughs> to that from you, Dr. Thea Turkington from the Centre for Climate Research, Singapore.